I scored, got man of the match in the cup. I thought, yeah, brilliant. Next day he calls me and he said, you know, Nate, you know, I thought you'd done really well. I'm um, pleased with you, but I think you'll benefit on going out on loan. That season, you were able to find a way of performing to a high level consistently. Mm. How did you manage to do that? What was the, you know, in between each game, what did that look like? Was that when we were in the Europa League? Yeah. I think it was um, just excitement for us and, and just it, it was different, you know. So in none of, I don't know, if, I don't think any of us had played in, in the Europa League before. So that was just a new experience for us. And we were just, you know, going to these different places and, you know, playing at... Um, you know, the Messiah and, and all of them, them places there were just like, wow, you know, we kind of thought, yeah, this is a dream come true kind of thing, you know, travelling around because, you know, we're little old Swansea at the time. You know, yeah, we'd done well. We were progressing and making those steps, but yeah, this is a different different ball game, you know. Um, so I think we just went off of adrenaline, really. Um, and again, we believed in what we were doing. Um, Playing-wise, we had some great technicians, you know, great players, um, a lot of foreign boys that, that kind of helped balance that out as well. Um and, um, yeah, we just went out there and enjoyed the time because, you know, again, winning the League Cup was um, a big, you know, moment in Swansea history. And um, and and being in Europa League was, was another one. So, you know, we just wanted to make sure that we just enjoyed it while it lasts. And that period of time in between, obviously, playing on a Thursday, playing on a weekend, playing on a Thursday, playing on a weekend, a lot of guys playing at the moment, due to obviously recent events, the schedules of football are, you know, are relentless. Guys are having to recover really quickly. Mm. What specifically did that look like for you? Like what sort of stuff were you doing and what was important for you to be able to get from one game to another? I think it was, um, um, a lot of the time it was just recovery. I mean, you know, we were lucky enough to have, um, you know, Laudrup, um, who made us, he just made us, kind of understand that we had to look after ourselves, look at and know our bodies. Um and he um he played before so he knew what it what it what it meant. Um but i think it all comes down to how teams play, how players play. Obviously if you're, you know, a guy that's, you know, put in very high numbers running up and down, then obviously naturally it's gonna be tough for you. But um obviously the nutrition then does come into place and it's making sure that you're eating well, you know, sleeping and, and drinking well, which I do feel it does help you. Um, I'm not um, I'm not with it 100%, um, but yeah, I do think that that, that helps. And um, I mean, again, at the end of the day, you know, that, that's that's your job. At the end of the day, you know, you've got, you got to go out there and you've got to do what you need to do. Um, whether you need to come off because you can't go any further, you go out there and you have to give it your all. Um, that's, that's the be all and end all, really. So recovery at the top level, um, what does that look like? And can guys who are not playing at that level relate to that can they emulate what that looks like yeah i think they can um like i said to you i think it, a lot of the time you know it looks more complicated than it is um i know we've got a few um sports scientists that uh you know like to give it the uh the big one and say you gotta do this and that but and they are right most of the time you know there are things that will help you um but i think that individually you can find what works for you you know some some things that work for me doesn't you know, it might not work for somebody else. Ice baths, for instance, and that kind of recovery um, helps other people. For me, it's just making sure that I sit down and rest my legs, you know, and I'm not running about, walking about, um, having a massage or, or whatever helps players. Sometimes, you know, it's it's not the case case for me. So I think it's finding that little, little thing that works for you. Um, and sometimes it's a placebo effect in your brain that, you know, you think, oh, I've done that now. You know, I feel a million, a million dollars where you know, you're still actually the same, but, you know, it's it's in your head that you feel good. So therefore, you know, you're going to go on and, and perform. You guys had, had obviously played the championship, played in the Premier League, and, and in a short space of time had gone from, you know, experiencing different styles of play. You'd gone from being the team that everybody expected to win to being the team that possibly people didn't expect to win games. Mm. Um, what was it like in, in Europe and obviously exp experiencing new styles of play and, and travelling obviously to different leagues and, and experience, experience in those sort of football games? Um, it, was, it was amazing, to be honest with you, because again, you know, you're playing against teams that have a different way of playing, you know, their whole setup is different. I mean, we had when we had a few Spanish boys come over, um, they were doing things that, um, you know, we were looking at like, what are you doing that for? You know, um, 
having siestas and, and then not going to bed till like one o'clock at night. And, you know, I remember the, the coaches and that, uh, they weren't happy with them doing that, but that was implemented from them. For, you know, that was their, you know, um, their way from when they were such a young, young kid. Um, but playing against other teams, you get to, you know, again, if you if you want to hone in and watch what they do and, and how they do things, you know, it's a small little details that, that they do do that you can um, you can pick up on, you know, and it's um, playing against teams that are amazing tactically, um, attacking defensively, um, you know, know how to, again, like keep the ball, for instance, you know, I think Spain are that, you know, unbelievable at the way they do that. Um, so seeing... You know, that culture um, helped a lot of us that were in the team at the time put that into their game, which helped me, you know. So, yeah, what did you take from those games? Um, just things that, you know, you didn't have to be 100 miles an hour. Like, that was always me, you know. I was always, because I had pace, it was like, get the ball and go, you know. And um, knowing when you can kind of just turn the volume down and then back up again was was, was a big thing for me. Um, and that became a, a big part in the way I play, you know, um, slowing it down, sucking people in, making sure that then, you know, it's a burst and I'm, and I'm, and I'm through. That was, um, a skill of mine, you know, kind of a one, two and behind. Um, and again, learning that it wasn't always, I had to beat somebody, you know, and, and doing selfish runs that opened up play, you know, it's all, it's all again, it's all small details that you get to, um, implement into your game. Um, and that's if you obviously care to listen and learn um but yeah I, I enjoyed that how important is it just going to touch on that a little bit more that young guys um are, you know hopefully people who can relate to you um are getting to a point where they're now sort of trying to absorb information they're trying to take things in they're trying to you know i'm not the finished article i don't know everything mm. um and i'm going to continue to learn to to be the best possible version of myself i can be how important is that it is very important and i think that there's too many distractions around now, you know, the social media, um, you've got YouTube and, and everybody can log on and, and, and find videos of somebody doing this and that's what they want to do, you know, but the best thing is to, is to listen to your coach, you know, um, whether you believe in what he's doing or not, he's bringing something different to the table and obviously he's got that position for a reason and um, he, he knows what he's talking about. Um, so yeah, make, making sure that you don't go off on a whim and just try and do everything at once and just take into to account of um of the professionals that can that can help you and ask for advice you ask for help you know um not always think feel that you have to take it up on yourself to to do this because it might be wrong what you're doing you know or or could be right um in my opinion nothing's right or wrong um and you just have to try and merge everything together so i want to get in you know and spend a bit of time on arguably the most successful part of your career um but may not have been perceived that way, obviously, when it first came about. I just want to, you know, talk about in 2015 when you joined Leicester on loan, um, how did that come about for you? And, you know, what were your first impressions, both of the team when you arrived and what your perception of your own ambition was by being there? Um, it was a tough one. It was a tough one to take for me personally. Um, I mean, again, you know, things that were happening off the field um, that people didn't know about um, did play a part into a lot of those things. Um I just moved house in Swansea to another house. Um, uh, wife was pregnant with a second child, um, and uh, and I just thought, you know, going off of the back of last season that I was doing well, I thought, you know, I was gonna be involved at least with the team. Uh, Gary Mack was the manager at the time, um, and when they came back, it was um, obviously always competition for places. You know, I'd put everything into to, to pre-season, um, and then I got left out of the squad against against Chelsea away, and. That was when, you know, I thought, well, you know, hold on, what's what's, what's going on with me then? Um, and then we had that conversation where I basically got told that, you know, um, I was no longer needed for the club and I can go and, you know, find somewhere elsewhere. So um, I think off of the back of my success again with, you know, um, the League Cup and, you know, scoring in the final and man of the match, I think I had a lot of interest. So there was a few teams that had come up to the Premiership and um, a few other teams that um, wanted me to go on loan. And I said to my agent, you know, I just want to go and play. You know, if he doesn't want me there, that's fine. I'll go and play somewhere. So um, I think it was, I had a lot of offers and I was on an hour in and then Leicester came in, deadline day it was. Um, I just finished training um, at Swansea and uh, my agent called me and said, you know, Leicester, fancy it. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, okay. And he's like, right, I need to get out there now. And I was thinking, oh, that's 
how am I going to get up there? It's like a four hour drive or something. Um, so he said, oh, I'll call you back. And then in the end, um, you know, the late chairman of Leicester, um, he sent a, the helicopter for me to come down and, and I thought, oh, what's going on here then? I'm feeling like somebody here. So I go up there and, um, and um, touched down and, and I ended up signing for, for Leicester, who at the time were, were, were doing really well in the league, um, which kind of played a part of me going there. You know, I wanted to, to go to a team that were, were doing well. In a sense, I wanted to prove that, you know, I wasn't um, a piece of piece of rubbish, which I felt at the time. You know, I felt like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah off you go kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I went to Leicester and, um, and it all went, went okay for me. 